All right, I'm gonna try this again. One more time. One more time. Just keep cutting that on you or something? Yeah, my darn phone ran out. <laughs> ran out of memory. Used up 99.9% .9 of my gigabytes. <laughs> uh, up uh, Wait, what is wrong? But it's working now. All right. Technology is great until it doesn't work. So we're having a grinding party, and um, we've got Isaac and Jan on the big grinder. It's a coarse, it's a coarse grind on it, so it's chunking it up in big old pieces. And then we've got uh, Ben over there doing a fine grind on the small grinder. Anyway, uh, we found out a big deal here. The uh, the one that Isaac's on there is a four inch. It's got a four inch throat on it. I mean, it just chunks it out. This thing just eats it. Oh. Those chunks you're putting in there are frozen. Yeah. You'll go see Connor Station next. Yeah, look at that. Frozen meat. Just chunking it out. That's too big to make hamburgers, so we got a, a smaller plate that goes in there. And that'll be our next grind. There it is. We'll be switching it soon. Yep. Yeah. Oh, there you can see what it looks like. Yeah. Ben's using his height advantage there. <laughs> <laughs> Comes in handy sometimes. I'd have to stand on my tippy toes to get that much leverage on it. <laughs> it's coming out pretty good though, Ben. You, you got a pound of hamburger there. That's enough for a dinner. Yeah. We'll get there. Yep. And then here's the here's the working stiff over here. <laughs> he's choking he's choking that up. Folks, that's frozen. That's frozen meat. Nice working pretty good to cut through it. <laughs> yeah. It really is. Man, that stuff just it looks like cutting ice cubes when it's made out of meat. <laughs> Almost looks like pieces of watermelon or something. But uh, these are a couple of cows that uh, Connor and uh, Ben and Isaac and I butchered, and we froze it. We froze it in big chunks, and now uh, we've had it thawing out for a couple of days. When I say thawing out, it's just not like a rock anymore. It's you don't want to you don't want to grind thawed meat. If it's completely thawed, it's a wreck. It's just absolutely a wreck. I'll get the door for you, Connor. Thank you. So he's bringing in a chunk there. About a 30 pound chunk of meat, and uh, here's the pieces that we've had inside coolers for two days and they're still froze. Just it's semi froze, though. And those are froze. I found those are two pieces that Jan missed in the freezer. So, uh, I gotta show you the freezer. Check this out. Hey, Smoke, how's it going? How you doing, buddy? I left the door open a while ago when I came out here to put meat in the freezer and <laughs> Smokey's nose is like oh dad you got you got some meat for me those of you all that uh, get dizzy with the camera moving around I'm sorry but I gotta walk out here I'm gonna show you the meat this is the first cooler so we're laying it in layers in here and once it all gets froze solid then we'll stack it those are two pound packages vacuum sealed we've got two uh, stations in there frank and brenda are uh, doing the ceiling of course we got everything there's some corn that we canned uh, folks there's something to be said about food security this this cooler or this freezer here's got meat um, strawberries <laughs> there's some lamb Ooh. yeah that's, that's a lamb Lamb rack right there. Mm, mm, mm. Rack of lamb. I need to get that out. I saw a leg of lamb in here a while ago. Where's it going? Oh, that's another rack. But you know, if you have uh, if you have some land and it's got forage on it, I had a guy email me the other day 
He's like, Greg, I've had this property for a good while, and I, you know, I never did anything with it. And uh, all of a sudden, I'm like, well, why can't I do what Greg's doing on a smaller scale? And you absolutely can. Um, there's no, you don't have to have you know thousands of acres. You can have ten acres. Get you a couple of sheep and raise them up for your family. You know, it's pretty nice to have a, a source of meat for your own family. You know where it came from, and it's healthy too. You know, you know, you it doesn't have a lot of additives in it or any other than mineral and salt and water the cows ate in the grass. But uh, I mean, we're chunking this meat up. We still got probably a hundred pounds to go. Started out with about four hundred. I bet I'm falling behind on my work right here. Oh, yeah, it's getting almost full. So they're actually pulling the, the air out of the bag right here. After we take the video shot off. No. I ran out all my gigabytes. <laughs> gigabytes are the first thing to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, you got the little one on? Okay. I'm doing the packing right now. Or I'm watching the packing, I'm not doing it. So these are the bags that you cut? Yeah. Linda? So you cut them and we seal them. And then I fold over the top like that and fill them like that because that way you don't get grease on the part that needs to be basically sealed. Vacuum. Yeah. yeah. Once you get so grease on, it doesn't seal very well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I see you got your scales out there. Yep. So we decided to go with the digital balance this time. Yeah, wow. And this guy's done. Look at that. So. When you just put, I know we should be getting them. Oh, look at her. Yeah, because then they just stay. Yep, they stack better. good, don't they? Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Okay, and then these guys come Yes, looking good. There's some serious meat there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What do you got going over here, Jen? You got the, oh my goodness. This is the coarse grain. Coarse the... grain, okay. I just turned my head for a minute. You've already got a whole thing full of meat. Yeah. Ben's working on his. <laughs> That's the difference right there. Yeah. yeah this is a so, four inch. So Ben's got the yeah, two inch. Right That's the two inch. For those who want to take the time. <laughs> That's Enjoy the four life. inch. Folks, get a big grinder. If you're going to try and do a whole beef, don't do it with this. It's okay you, with a deer. Use that. Yeah, a deer is perfect for a deer. Too. Yeah, it's good for a deer, but you, you know, beef, you're doing five, six hundred pounds of meat. You need something to get with it. Because you've got two of them. Yeah, that's right. Man. Connor, you are a cutting machine now. <laughs> It's, uh, it's getting easier as time goes on. That is some beautiful meat. It's even got some good fat mixed with it. Yeah. Yeah, we weren't sure that they were going to have a bunch of fat on them, but some of them had some good pieces on there. Yep. Man, you have got a chunk there. That, that piece there must weigh 30, 40 pounds. Yeah. Frozen salt. Yep. Folks, we're, we're chunking up the whole cow. So there's the, the back loins, um, the... The ribeye, everything, it's all ground up. All the roast, the neck, the brisket, it's all in here. And that's called whole hamburger grind. That's the prime stuff you buy. If you were gonna buy it at the store, the, the super the super hamburger, that's what you'd be eating here, except for ours don't have all that stuff in it. <laughs> well, what's Our, the better, what's, how come grass fed is better? It's better because it comes right from the cow to the grass, to the human. There's not a lot of additives. There's no GMOs. Uh, what else? The grain, the CLA. So the conjugated linoleic acid, there's CLAs in it. It's a lot higher in that. The good ones. Um, they found out that when you feed a, a lot of grain to animals, sometimes it's not the best. How about a better make of three, six ratio? Right, you, you mess that up a little bit. So you can go to the website called eatwild.com check that one out it'll tell you the difference and uh, she does a good job with that website that's Joe Robinson and there is some huge huge health aspects of just knowing what you're eating I think it makes a big difference all right so you got the course one in again yeah, yeah. We, we went from the course to the time of the course at the time <laughs> 
All right, I want to see you feed that dude. So you're putting frozen meat in there. So when it doesn't have as much fat in it from the different cuts, we put the, this uh, pork fat that we have from the grass, from a um, pasture. Pasture it. pig? Yeah. yeah. But otherwise, this has a lot of fat on it and we're not adding it. Yeah. The different cuts of the meat will have less fat on right. it. Right. Why do we need the fat? Because it lubricates. It what lubricates. You, you it makes that? a. That's yeah. right. That's right. If you try and grill it, it'll fall. If you try and grill it, it'll fall apart on the grill. And the fat's where the, a lot of the flavor is too. All the flavor. <laughs> so good. Yeah. Ben says that's where all the flavor's at. <laughs> I used to have an old friend, and he'd cook up a big old steak and have a big bunch of fat on it. And that's the first part he ate was the oh, fat. Yeah. I've converted I've converted Isaac from being a, a fat lover. A big fat guy. Big fat guy as we call it. And then when we first got here we took up pork chops, I'd take his extra fat and eat it. And now I can't get it from him anymore. You can't get his extra fat? No. Nope. I ain't giving that away. That's the best part. Took took Ben to educate you on that. That's right. <laughs> also, it helps glide glide the, the gliding and the taste in it too. Yep, absolutely. If you have a hundred percent lean, you try and eat it, it kind of hangs up on your throat. <laughs> yeah, but it's so hard to cook stuff that's really lean. Yeah. You just overcook it so quick. Yeah. It gets dry, really dry. Yeah. Well, folks, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. I feel guilty I'm not doing anything. And that cooler is needing emptied right there. And uh, Frank and Brenda are going to run out of a place to put the meat. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off here. Oh, I want to give a plug to the uh, Stockman Grass Farmer School uh, that I'm going to be uh, teaching at. And that's in September. Check out our website. Uh, we're going to be at Joel Salatin's farm. There's myself, uh, Joel Salatin. Uh, Jordan Green, uh, Jim Garish, um, Steve Kenyon, uh, Sherry Salatin, um, I think I left out one. Oh, uh, Ray Archuleta. And uh, yeah, it's going to be at Joel's Farm in Swoop, Virginia. So check that out. And uh, I'm going to be, it's a two day, and uh, Joel's going to be feeding us uh, the farm fresh food right there off the farm. And uh, if you haven't been to Joel's Farm yet, you ought to do that. It's pretty neat to see and I'm looking forward to meeting up with Joel and that group and uh, Jan and I'll be out there for uh, the two days taking part and being part of that school so anyway check it out go to our website greenpatchesfarm.net or go to the Stockman Grass Farmer just google Stockman Grass Farmer their website it gives you all the details of where to sign up and different things and uh, hope to see some of y'all there y'all have a good one and uh, we're going to see y'all down the road <laughs>